Hey, Kentucky, this is Mary Jo Perino. Tonight, we'll look ahead to UK South Carolina. A Louisville teen is expelled for wearing a rainbow colored shirt on social media. And I'll go one on one with Cash Daniel. All that and more is next on Hey, Kentucky. Welcome to Hey, Kentucky. Ryan Lemon is my co host tonight. We got a, a lot of cash stuff today. That's you talk to him, we talk to him. He's He's a good dude. It was a great interview yeah. we had on KSR today, and I know he killed it with your interview he did with you today. Yeah, you're going to want to see it, so yeah. stay tuned. we got a bunch of that. But we got to begin with UK basketball. The Cats look to extend their four-game winning streak tomorrow night. Kentucky will travel to South Carolina for a conference matchup with the Gamecocks. Ashton Haggins, Nick Richards, and Tyrese Maxey have combined to account for 53% of UK scoring this season and have scored 49% of all the Cats' points over the last five games. But assistant Kenny Payne acknowledges the challenges of playing in Columbia. Well, I think the first thing is their culture. Frank Martin is a, a tough coach, tough-minded coach. His culture is physicality, toughness, rebounding, fighting. Uh, you're not going to just walk into his arena and play basketball and it's free-flowing. He's going to make the game hard. You're going to get hit at times. Um, and you got to be ready for a fight. Meanwhile, South Carolina is trying to avoid a four-game losing streak. Frank Martin admits that dealing with Hagens, a player he once recruited, will not be easy. Bringing the ball up the court against him is a problem because uh, he's so good at guarding the basketball. Um, and he disrupts uh, your point of entry on offense, um, and that's something that we haven't been good against this year. Team, when we've played teams that are uh, defensively aggressive that disrupt point of entry, uh, we've struggled to, to be able to make three passes and get a good shot. So, Ryan, I, I will say this on paper looks uh, like Kentucky should win because UK feels like it's gelling. South Carolina is literally coming apart at the seams right now. Uh, Frank Martin said his players are playing casual and he doesn't know what to do. When you can't motivate them, you got to do that yourself. Yeah. If you can't get motivated by Frank Martin, get out of <laughs> basketball. But uh, this, I, I feel good about the Cats going into this one. Yeah, South Carolina just lost to Tennessee last time out by one point. But right before Christmas, they won at Virginia, which is not an easy place to win. Uh, but, yeah, Frank Martin, I like him as a coach. But Kentucky's got better players, yeah. more talented players. This should be a win for Kentucky. Of course, you go on the road in the SEC, you never know. But for a true road game, they just won at Georgia, yeah. a better Georgia team. So I like Kentucky's chances for sure. Yeah, for sure. All right, staying with basketball, Coach Cal continues to look for production for J. Montgomery. When the Cats played Alabama on Saturday, he went 4 of 6 from the field to score 8 points. He also grabbed 6 defensive rebounds and blocked a shot in 25 minutes. Those may not be eye-popping numbers, but they're a step in the right direction. Montgomery is coming off a scoring slump following double-digit performances against UAB and Fairleigh Dickinson early in the season. And, Ryan, I think once we saw those two games, we were like, okay, EJ is going to have one of those P.J. Washington-type seasons. It hasn't happened yet. Yeah, at least we saw some signs of life yeah. from EJ in this last game. Because up until then, he has been like MIA a lot. And he's too good for that. Yes. He just can't disappear. He is way too talented to have these games where he is a non-factor. And if this team wants to go a long way, they need EJ Montgomery. They, exactly right. Because Nick Richards, while he's gotten so much more consistent, um, they, they need more than From him. that four spot, and yeah. EJ's the guy that can do it. Yeah, all right. In other news, the parents of a Louisville teen are upset after she was expelled from her private Christian school over a social media post. Whitefield Academy freshman Kayla Kenny was wearing a rainbow colored shirt while celebrating her 15th birthday at a restaurant with a rainbow cake. Her mother later shared a picture of it on Facebook. When school administrators saw the photo, they claimed it was the latest in two years worth of quote, lifestyle violations that demonstrated a posture of morality and cultural acceptance contrary to that of Whitefield's Academy's beliefs. End quote. The school's code of conduct does address sexual orientation and says if a student's off-campus behavior isn't in line with Whitefield's beliefs, they can be disciplined. But Kayla's mother wants to know how the shirt brought them to that conclusion. She loves to laugh and dance, and that's just her. There was nothing intended by that. Um, and even when I went back and got the receipt from the bakery, it didn't say anything about representation. It just said assorted colors. You know, we teach our kids, what would Jesus do? What would he do here? 
Kayla's mom says the school refused to meet with her, but they agreed to exchange the expulsion to a voluntary withdrawal, so it's not on Kayla's record anymore. Now, the school says this, there's a history of lifestyle choices or, or whatever violations. violations. I would have been kicked out of this school. I wouldn't have gone to this school, yeah, first it, of all. <laughs> it's, a, it's a rainbow shirt. Yeah. She didn't wear it at school. She wore it on her own time. I don't see how that is a lifestyle violation from a shirt with a rainbow cake. I really don't. I'm on mom's side on this. I also don't see how cultural acceptance of people is a lifestyle violation. No. Not in my mind, that's not. All right, in Frankfurt, a new bill would eliminate certain holidays from the state's official list. The, proposed, the proposal by three Republican lawmakers would remove January 13th, Franklin D. Roosevelt Day, January 19th, Robert E. Lee Day, and June 3rd, Confederate Memorial and Jefferson Davis Day. Of course, leaders in Kentucky and other states have struggled with monuments celebrating the Confederacy and where they should fit into our history as the debate about them has grown over the past few years, Ryan. I had no idea there was a Robert E. Lee Day. Me neither. I had no clue that those were ho holidays on our calendar. No. We are wasting way too much time on stuff like this. Get to the more important issues. This is ridiculous. This is. There's a pancake day. There's. Now, walk, wait a walk. minute. I like pancake day. Right. <laughs> yeah. I'm not saying get rid of it. Slow down. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, we got a day for everything. Why yes. are we worried about these? Uh, it's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. You're right. Pancake Get back to Pancake good, Day. That's a good day. That's a good day. A bill proposed last week would outlaw items being labeled as milk unless they come from healthy hooved mammals. The bill comes as the dairy industry in Kentucky and the United States continues a downward slide. The amount of liquid milk consumed per capita in the U.S. has tumbled more than 40% since 1975. Meanwhile, consumption of alternative milks like soy and almond have increased by 15% just since the start of 2018. But many in the dairy industry don't consider those milk products. How do you milk an almond? How do you milk a soybean? It should have been labeled a juice. To start with, if it had been labeled a juice, the dairy industry would have never said a word. Since being introduced, the bill has drawn criticism on social media, with many complaining that it's a waste of time and will have no positive result for farmers. Ryan, I, I do kind of think it's a waste of time, but I, I bet, I, I feel like there might be a positive impact for farmers. I, I really do. I, I said on KSR today, I'm fine with the milk system as we have in place right now. Yeah. I can see where dairy farmers don't want it called almond milk and soy milk if it is not milk. I think Trader Joe's have already changed it and called it almond juice or something like yeah. that. I don't know why we need to spend our legislative money to try to change it, keep our milk system the way it is, and let the people decide what they want to drink. <laughs> right. <laughs> and go back to pancake day. Yes, pancake with milk. With milk. That's... Not almond milk or soy milk. I want milk. I want milk. And That's... I know what milk is. Yes. I just, I'll just keep hearing. Court the... has ruled. Yeah, the meet the parents line in my head. I just keep hearing it over and over again. I don't want to say it, but you I know, know, you're talking you know about. what it is. Yeah. Up next on Hey Kentucky, I'm going to sit down with a True Blue fan favorite. UK linebacker Cash Daniel talks about his upcoming autograph tour and other great memories from his career in blue. Stay with us.